Hello everyone, welcome back to CR Sim Racing and after an extended break we're finally back behind the wheel. Our first race after returning from holidays is in iRacing, the Formula IR04 at Watkins Glen. We're car number 14 for this one and qualifying went very much to form. We've put it 13th on the grid, just managing to creep into the 111s. But look how close all the times are. We're only two tenths of a second off seventh position, but we're also only a couple of tenths off 16th. So who knows how this race is going to play out. Let's get down to the grid and see how we get on. Green flag, green flag. Well, the number five car, Edmund Webb, got an absolute stinker of a start. There's cars swerving everywhere to get around him. We've moved to the inside to get past, but that is going to give us a really tight entry into T1. We're going to have to hug the curb. There's mayhem on the outside. Two or three cars involved in that crash. We'll go back and check out the replays to see what happened in a little bit, but I just saw in my rearview mirror all kinds of commotion. But the important thing is that we've got through safely and actually we're in a pretty healthy position because of that incident in turn one. There's quite a bit of breathing room behind us. Daniel Clusell has got through by the looks of it. He's only 0.6 of a second behind, but after that, there's a three second gap to the rest of the field. So we work through the inner loop for the first time. Again, a nice lot of space so we can get through there quite comfortably. I was more than a little worried about that section on lap one. It has the potential for complete carnage when you get cars going in there two and three wide. But we had quite a leisurely route through there. In the rear view mirror, Clazella's taking a really wide line through the outer loop. That might give us a tenth or two advantage over him as we chase this pack in front. We're coming towards the end of lap one here. A really fast lap around the cut layout of Watkins Glen. We'll see what position we're in on the relative board as we cross the line, but I suspect we've maintained 13th position because Edmund Webber, we saw have that bad start in front of us. He is still in front of us, so I don't think we've gained any positions. We haven't. We're still in 13th. However, we might have a sniff of 12th because Liam Joyhead got himself out onto that curve. That's going to cost him some exit speed. There's room to have a look up the inside into these S's, but we just had to ease off the gas slightly to avoid contact. That's going to invite the car behind Daniel Clazella to make a challenge for position. Unlike me, he was able to keep his foot planted firmly to the floor there. He's going to have a little bit of extra speed. He's on the outside. I think we're just going to have to back off and give him this position. So yeah, we started the lap challenging for 12th. Now we find ourselves down to 14th. Well, we might get that position back straight away because there's a car that spun out. That's Alberto Garcia. He's crashed out of seventh position. So we're back up to 13th. Another wide line from Clazellas in front. I saw him take that exact line in the rearview mirror a lap ago. I wondered if it might earn him a slowdown penalty, but it doesn't seem to have. Anyway, we're going to end lap two still in 13th position. So let's go back, check out a replay to see what went down on those opening two laps. Here's the start as the lights go green. We're lining up on the left of the screen. You can see cars going in all directions to get around Edmund Webb. We move over to the far left. That's us, car number 14. But glance over to the right of your screen, the blue number 11, because we're going to hit T1 three wide, and it's the number 11 driver, Nico Casisto, who comes off worst after locking wheels with the car in the middle. A lap later, we had a sniff up the inside of Liam Choi. We had to get off the gas to avoid contact. That invited the car behind. Daniel Clazellas to power past and take 13th position. However, a couple of corners later, we got that 13th back when Alberto Garcia gets it all wrong coming out of the inner loop. Well, it really is quite unusual to be this lonely so early in a Formula 4 race. It's now one and a half seconds to the pack in front and a similar gap back to the driver in 14th, Mario Valero. We're chasing a pack of five here, although that pack of five has just become four because we've lost Martin Bujo. He's crashed out of 10th on the entrance into the inner loop. So we're up to 12th position now. We're chasing Daniel Glazellas, who once again takes that wide line on the exit of the outer loop. It's clearly not earning him any slowdown penalties, but he must be picking up the instant points every time he runs off track. He's done it on each of the four laps so far, so that's something to keep an eye on. But we're approaching the end of lap four on track now. We know we're up to 12th position after losing Beaujou at the inner loop. So we're now in hot pursuit of Daniel Clazellas in 11th, Liam Choi in 10th and Stefan Kreyer in 9th. I tell you what, these guys in front must be running at a decent pace. Normally when you see drivers ahead battling so closely together, you can close in the gap, but we're not making any inroads on them at the moment. 
Daniel Glazellas, however, is starting to make progress. He's pulled alongside and got past Liam Joy. So Glazellas is up to 10th, Joy down to 11th. And we're just doing our very best to try and stick with them here. Car again. Oh, and who have we lost? I was half expecting to see one of the cars ahead in it, but no, it's that green car on the right, Daniel Coleman, who was running in sixth position. So that's promoting the summer place. Meanwhile, keep your eye on that yellow car. Is he going to go wide again? Yes, he is, Glucellas. But he holds on to the position. So towards the end of lap five, we're up to 11th. Well, these Formula 4 cars really don't like the kerbs at the inner loop. We've seen two victims. Martin Bougeot was the first, just clipping that kerb on the inside right there, which unsettles his car and sends him into the barrier. And then a couple of laps later, Daniel Coleman, the number 12, again here in that inside kerb. He just about saves it, but he can't survive the second kerb. Well, we said earlier in the race about being lonely. We're certainly not lonely now. Look in the rearview mirror. We have got company. Oh, we hit that kerb a little bit too hard as well. We've seen a few casualties there already. Thankfully, we weren't added to the list. But as we go around the outer loop, we now have Javier Martin in 12th and Mario Valero in 13th, both within one second of us. So, yeah, we've got real problems here. And look at the extra speed that Martin is carrying with that draft. Thankfully, he's not quite close enough to make a move. But I have a feeling that we're going to come under attack very, very shortly. We're going to have to take a defensive line into the final turn to make sure there's no gap. And then get on the gas as quickly as we can to cross the start and finish line. We're beginning lap eight now. And Martin behind is coming under all sorts of pressure from Mario Valera. Hopefully that might help us out. But as we hit T1, we're carrying way too much speed. We try and throw it in, but we're out onto the kerb. That's going to cost us some speed and it's going to invite Martin to make the easiest pass he's made all race. Not only that, it opened up a gap for Valero to go through too. So a really costly mistake into T1 there. It's cost us two positions. So we're down from 11th to 13th, but let's just keep on the back of these two guys. They're still battling hard for that position so maybe there might be some contact in the inner loop let's be in a position to pounce if it all goes wrong no we're all gonna get through cleanly so yeah we're down to 13th position yeah big mistake into t1 this was once you get out on the main part of that curb on the outside it's really difficult to control the car it costs you all kinds of speed and you can see the gap it opened up martin jumps through closely followed by mario valero Rejoining the live action on lap 10. We're struggling to keep up with Valero and Martin. We're now more than one and a half seconds behind them. But as we enter the inner loop for the 10th time, there's more carnage this time. It's Clusellus who's gone. And the two cars in front both had to lift. So that is going to help us close the gap right in on them. Yeah, watch Glazellas, the yellow number four on the outside. He's actually going to come into contact with Liam Joy. And that's what's going to send him off into the runoff area. Riding on board with the car behind now. Watch Joy on the inside. He's going to clip that curb and it sends him right across. And that's what causes the contact that sends Glazellas off. So Clozellas' crash put us up to 12th position and once we go on to the tail of Valero and Martin we were just about able to stick with them. We're starting lap 12 now but as you can see in the rear view mirror we've got company again. This time Daniel Coleman. We saw Coleman come to grief on the inner loop earlier in the race so we know he's one of the front runners. We know he's got speed and we know we're going to have to work really hard to try and keep him behind us. Yeah, I can just see that gap disappearing in the rearview mirror. Coleman's got real speed through the S's. He's only 0.2 of a second behind now, so he's going to be picking up some draft. Is he going to try and make a move into the inner loop? He's going to move to the inside. He's going to think about it. We could be too wide into the chicane here. We just need to hold our line. Thankfully, he's thought better of it, but we've lost another driver. We have to get on the brakes to avoid running into Mario Valero. That looked like Javier Martin, who crashed out. So we've lost Martin, we're up to 11th and we almost ran right into the back of Mario Valero in 10th. We had to jam on the brakes. That's cost us some speed and that's invited Coleman to challenge. So we're going to have to go defensive into the penultimate turn. There's no way round for Coleman there. But yeah, what on earth happened to Martin at the inner loop? Let's go back and check out a replay. Martin's the turquoise number seven. He's going to pull out of the slipstream of Liam Choi and try and move up the inside into the loop. He clips the curb and then locks wheels with Choi. That's what sends him out. We 
are picking up a proper toad and the start finish straight from Valero there. We got all kinds of extra speed. Now on the exit, oh, we've got caught on that curb again. That's going to cost us some speed. Will that give Coleman the chance he needs to get by? He's going to have a look around the outside. He's poked his nose alongside, so we're going to have to hold a tight line here. It's going to give Coleman the inside line down the long straight into the inner loop. Is he going to make it count? We just need to grit our teeth and hold our line here. We need to be brave if we're going to hold on to this position. And yes, he has thought better of it. Oh, but we run it a little bit hot and we take far too much of that inside curb. Oh, my heart was in my mouth for a moment there. We've seen so many incidents of races ruined just by clipping those curbs. I almost became another statistic there. Oh, but look at Coleman. He's boxing clever this time. He had the outside line last time. He knew there wasn't a way around, so he's made sure he's poked his nose up the inside this time. There's nothing I can do about it. Coleman takes the position. He's up to 11th. We're down to 12th at the end of lap 13. Now, the big question is, are we going to be able to do anything about this? Because it looks like the three drivers in front all have just a little bit more speed than we do as we cross the line to start lap 14. Now, I think that we're going to have another four laps left of this race. Now, I'm looking at the leaderboard, specifically the drivers right behind in 13th and 14th, Alberto Garcia and Javier Martin. Both of those drivers have been in front of us at points in this race. We know they're quicker, and it's not inconceivable to think that they both could catch us over this next four laps, particularly Garcia. He's within two seconds of us. But we can't think about what's behind us. Let's focus on what's in front. And Mario Valero and Liam Choi are side by side going into the inner loop. They surely can't get through without contact. There is contact, but we've got no choice but to take to the grass. Oh, this could be dangerous. We've got back on course. And it was actually Daniel Coleman that we lost alongside Mario Valero. It was Valero and Choi who were side by side originally, but Coleman was the one who crashed out. We've been handed a slowdown penalty, but that's no problem. We can serve that. We've gained two positions. We are in to the top ten. Valero in the white, Joy in the orange. I felt sure it was those two who were going to come together. But then, yeah, look at Coleman in the green. He runs into the back of Valero. A spectacular accident. Oh, and it's caused absolute mayhem. There are cars crashing out everywhere. And still, oh, we were so lucky to get through that unscathed, particularly when we ran onto the grass. We're on board now with Martin Bougeau. He had nowhere to go, and he runs right into Valero. And then Alberto Garcia, the number nine, had no choice but to take exactly the same line over the grass that I did, but he wasn't nearly as lucky. Losing control. These cars are so hard to control once you get on the green stuff. Absolute mayhem. So, yeah, dramatic stuff on the 14th lap at Watkins Glen. We just asked ourselves a lap or so ago whether we could do anything to improve on 12th position. Well, we have. We're up into the top ten. You're in the top ten. And there's the confirmation from Crew Chief. We're in 10th position with three laps to go in hot pursuit of Liam Choi in ninth. But unfortunately, Choi was just a little bit too quick for us. There was no way we could bridge that 1.9 second gap over the final three laps of this race. So 10th position was as good as it got for us. However, I'll certainly take that finish on my first race back after three weeks off. And we're going to cross the line to get a nice little boost to the I rating as well. We're now just five shy of the 1600 mark. Even the safety rating will get a tiny lift as well. So we'll take a look at the classified results then. And once again, it's a reminder that sometimes in this Formula 4 series, it's more important to be safe and consistent than it is to be fast. There we are in 10th, but look at the fastest lap times. Everyone else in the top 17 managed to get a lap in the 111s, except for me. So yeah, we were well off the pace in this race. Lots of work to be done this season, that's for sure. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please do leave a like and let me know what you thought of the race. I'll be back on the grid very soon. I'll see you then.